how to make your little wheel spacers sparkly. These guys. Start with a little bushing to push it out. This is just a steel rod they kind of fit on. And this is another kind of material these are made of, about the same size. If you notice, it doesn't go all the way to the end. See, there's a gap. Because I can put the life center right up in there, get kind of tight, and I go down here and kind of make sure they're all touching. If I'm happy with alignment, crank it down, lock the tailstock. That enables me to do all four at the same time. Nice.
first shot. some of this uh, a lot of polishing I like to do with a lathe makes it easier but hand polishing is something else that we all do but on a machined part like sprocket if you want it perfectly flat you lap it so I'm going to show a little bit of lapping I don't have enough time well I have time but I don't have enough space to make a video of the process because it takes hours. Anyway, enjoy. Now if you've been paying attention, you can see that I'm only moving a little bit. 
You don't want to go too far in one direction or the other. You want to be a short. That limits any cutting to a sharp, small section. And I go ten times between the nuts. I just pick a reference point. In this particular case, I'm doing eight positions. You could do four or three or whatever you want. Ten like two, seven, eight, nine, ten. Split the, the difference. And I just keep doing that. And realistically, you keep track of how many oscillations you do. Then periodically, you take it off and look at it. This sprocket had a lot of scarring all around this boss where the, the washer went. So it's getting real close. I'm going to do it another sequence and then flip it over and do the other side. again this is a real quick one I want to show you a trick I've got these big let's see big acorn nut you know it's stainless steel and it's for holding an axle on a on a what do you call it a little mini bike and there's clearance issues so we're making them real short so when you put something like this in the chuck of the lathe, getting it to run straight is a real hassle. You know, it's a weird little guy. There isn't really any way to indicate. I mean, you could put a, even on a three-jaw chuck, you'd have to like put it in there, get an indicator, and turn it all against this reference surface, and just tap it in to get it to run true. I'm going to show you a real trick. Where'd I put it? Oh. And it's this guy. If you look real close, this is like the easiest tool to make. It's just a little tiny bearing on a piece of mild steel that I cut down and put a nut on there. So let me get the camera set up. I'll show you how it works. All right, I hope you can see this. So you put this guy in and I am hanging it way out of the chuck, barely in there. So I can cut as much off of there as possible. So let's see what it looks like. Should be able to see a wobble there, right? It's kind of wobbly. So from here you can screw with it. You can indicate it and tap it back and forth and do all this kind of stuff. Or, you can pick up this little guy. Now, this is not my idea, by the way. I got to tell you, I uh, first encountered it watching some videos by uh, Click, Click Spring, And I thought, well, that's a genius idea. So anyway, watch this. So you just bring it in until the bearing, the outer ray starts running straight and, you know, constant. And then you stop. And then you torque it good, crack it in. Now the acorn nut ain't straight, but this surface right here, close enough for government work, baby.